Hey, Kelly, I like your shirt. Hey, yeah, it must have, <laughs> you got the memo too, I think, Lisa. I did, I did. It's twin day on today's boating broadcast, but it what is. else is coming up? Excellent episode. I know I say that every week, but this is a pretty cool episode. Really excited because uh, we have a really cool special guest. So today, uh, tis the season for giving. Uh, okay. Obviously, you know, the holidays are coming up. So we're going to be talking about some cool boating things you can get for the holidays. Uh, Volvo Penta looks towards the future. Some really interesting, new, innovative things coming out of Volvo Penta. I was wearing my Volvo Penta hat yesterday. It must have been, uh, you know, some sort of correlation there. And uh, Barrel Boss over in Texas, uh, the Wake Surf Championship. I got to attend that last year, actually. Yeah. Um, they announced their winners. They did some really cool virtual things this year. So, oh, Excellent. Also, uh, our special guest, like I mentioned, Troy Werner, owner and operator of Pelican Ops Eco-Friendly Marine Services. We're going to be uh, seeing cool. some really cool stuff from him and chatting uh, all things uh, being out on the water and some of his history. And uh, looking to land in for all the really cool uh, social media stuff, including intelligent animals and the silliness of humans. <laughs> when it relates to boating, of course. Yes, of course. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. I am Lisa and he is Kelly over hello, there. Hello. Welcome Interact back, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Interact with us in the comment section and please share this with your friends and family if you like what you see. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you. For our audio only listeners, if you'd like to see what you're listening to, join us on Facebook or YouTube. Just search for Marine Max and you'll be able to join our, our program there. Yes. Uh, first up, let's get into some headlines. Um, the first thing we really wanted to cover, tis the season for giving. Tis we spoke with Adam Lowy last week, uh, he's the executive director and founder of Move for Hunger based in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, so last week's episode, we we dived in and, and we really talked to him about what they're all about. So we've got a bunch of different locations, Marine Max Brick, Marine yep. Max Lake Hoptagon, Ship Bottom, Summers Point, Ocean View are all hosting food drives for mm -hmm. Move for Hunger. Very good cause. Um, we just want to go through a couple other great causes our stores are partnering with this holiday season. So if you're in the area and you're looking for to give back, um, there are a lot of people that are in need because of COVID. Uh, it just yes. helped stress the system a little bit. So um, sure. definitely want to to get out and, and give back where you can. Yeah, and it's just great that some of our stores up in the Northeast and I think across the United States uh, are doing some really cool things, uh, mm -hmm. especially with Move for Hunger, uh, like we did talk with them. I think it was last week's episode and just um, mm -hmm. some really good things happening considering COVID is running rampant and, uh, you know, the holidays are around. So it's uh, just a, a tough time for a lot of people when it should be a more fun and exciting time. So uh, Move for Hunger and the Marine Max stores are, are really uh, contributing uh, to the cause this year. Excellent. Yeah. So I'm uh, just going to go down a list of a couple more. Mm -hmm. Marine Max Clearwater here in the Bay Area. They're yes. filling the boat with love with an event for uh, Hands Across the Bay. So this is Julie Weintraub's uh, foundation, mm -hmm. and they uh, they deal with people in the Tampa Bay area who are in crisis due to no fault of their own. You know, um, sometimes right now, COVID's one of those yep. things. If it, they had uh, any hurricane damage, you know, or uh, just, you know, in a bad way and needed to get out of the house and now they're on their own. So it's a great, great foundation. Uh, highly recommend stopping by Marine Max Clearwater, talking to the team there a little bit more about that and, uh, you know, donating toys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's usually as easy as that. And, uh, uh, you know, check out Marine Max on, in there, there is this, uh, information on there talking about fill the boat with love events, uh, at Marine Max Clearwater. And of course, uh, contact your local Marine Max, including Mallory Showy, who is the marketing mm -hmm. coordinator at Marine Max Clearwater. If you want to learn more about what you can do and how you can help. Yes. All right. So uh, in Marine Max Charleston is our next one. Mm -hmm. They are hosting, uh, again, we we had the American Red Cross on one of our boating broadcasts. You can go back and take a look at them. Yeah. Um, so they're hosting a Red Cross blood drive plus fill the boat. So they're always did, doing some really cool stuff over yeah, there. Yeah, they I really are. Um, so the, they're doing the, uh, toys for tots with the Salvation Army this holiday season. Uh, Savannah and Lake Norman are also hosting toys for tots, fill the boat with love programs. So, uh, a lot of stuff going on there. Obviously the mission is to, uh, 
of the Toys for Tots program is to collect new and unwrapped toys and distribute the toys to less fortunate children mm -hmm. at Christmas, instilling hope in our young population. So always a great thing there. Uh, Marine Max Baltimore is filling the boat for a, a group called Casey Cares. It's a foundation that aids critically ill children with a virtual giving tree. Um, so it basically helps uh, families that have critical ill children enjoy childhood. So mm -hmm. they keep family spirits high by arranging programming, whether it's a simple movie night or a fresh pair of pajamas or attending a major sporting event. Casey Cares makes life a lot better by aiding are adding a personal touch throughout the year and making lasting memories for families um, in eight states and the DC area. So our mm -hmm. Baltimore store is is doing a toy drive and a virtual giving tree for them. Okay. Good stuff going on. And then out in Orlando, uh, Marine Max Orlando, they've partnered with the Give, Give Hope Foundation fundraiser, um, and they're doing a customer event uh, to help uh, promote the cause. Um, Give Hope, their mission is to provide support to children and families in Central Florida who are battling childhood cancer and have a unique combination of medical, emotional, and financial needs. So if you're in the Orlando area or middle of the state, seek out Marie Max Orlando, check out the website. They're doing a fun event uh, to, to raise money and just promote awareness for the Give Hope Foundation. Good stuff mm -hmm. going on there. Oh, for sure. Well, yeah. yeah, things are happening across the country, not only with Marine Max, but, you know, as, as we will be discussing, discussing with Troy, too, um, mm -hmm. you know, just a lot of good ways of giving back in many different ways. Um, Absolutely. You know, no matter what. All right. So if you're looking for a place to donate, check out the Marine Max website. Search through the events. There are a ton. Marine Max Pensacola is pairing with uh, Pensacola Honda this year. They're also doing a Toys for Tots drive. Uh, Marine Max and Coming Georgia, they're doing Toys for Tots, Panama City. Mm -hmm. They're partnering with a local organization up there in the Panhandle. And Marine Max St. Pete is hosting a canned food drive as well, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. So uh, if you're looking for something to, to give back to this holiday season, please check out marinemax.com. We'll help point you in the right direction. We're doing our best to make sure that we're uh, connecting with our local communities during this holiday holiday season. And I bet you, even if you're an organization that that likes to partner up with other organizations during mm -hmm. the holiday seasons or or throughout the year uh, for good causes, or if you'd like to maybe, you know, sponsor a product or something like that 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 attributes to whatever the cause is um, at that certain store, be sure to get in touch with the stores. I'm sure they are always yeah. looking for other opportunities to, you know, have some sort of raffle giveaway or something that you can kind of get your your company's name out there, but also donate to a good cause. So. Absolutely. All right. right. So next up, let's look towards the future with Volvo Penta. Ooh, yeah, Volvo Penta. It's such a such a cool company. I mean, uh, Volvo, you know, obviously mm -hmm. a lot of people know them for their cars, but also uh, in the boating industry, uh, mm -hmm. they are huge um, with their engines and uh, a lot of diesel technologies. But um, so, yeah, Volvo Penta encourages creative, innovative employees who can leverage the behemoth's parent company to see Ooh. ideas to fruition. Okay. Very cool. What does um, that mean? Well, let's read about it a little bit here. So um, they introduced the Stern Drive in 1959. Uh, mm -hmm. And while the idea of the Aqua Drive was the first conceived by some uh, Swedes, I'm guessing, it's required yeah. Volvo Penta's engineering and product development team uh, for it to become reality. So basically within the last uh, 40 years or so, you know, they've really been ramping up their technologies and uh, getting their, their team members to think differently when it comes to uh, technologies for boating. And uh, I think a lot of it is now um, kind of, you know, what can we do with electric drive? So look right. at here, you can see, um, you know, that they're clearly, obviously, you know, we talked about the cars that I think I could be wrong, but I know Volvo wants to get to fully electric at a certain point within like the next wow. decade. Um, so I'm guessing they're also starting to think that way when it comes to boating as well. Um, wow. So some really cool things taking place. Um, I know that uh, seven Marines uh, are, are not going to be uh, produced anymore, which uh, right. that was a, 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 you know, a big deal. Yeah, big deal. And it was actual, you know, a gas engine. So um, they're thinking differently. And I'm guessing uh, electric is going to be a big part of their future for sure. Yeah. So uh, you got to check this out. This is a really cool article here from uh, Trade Only and talking about, you know, the future of what's going to be taking place, especially with Volvo Penta and uh in their propulsion systems very cool stuff kelly good find good find 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, you think, uh, you know, cars slowly but surely, you're starting to see more Teslas and in, in, in basically every yeah. car manufacturer build electric. Um, and you're slowly going to start seeing that on the, out on the water more and more, you know? It makes sense. It makes sense. We adapt everything from the the car car business, right? Yeah. Better speakers, better sound systems, touchscreen displays. I just thought Look, of something too, Lisa. What? So, you know, you always have shore power on, on uh, docks, right? You always have the plug-in right there. So I wonder if they can somehow utilize that shore power system to just plug in your boat when you're done using it, charge the batteries up and you're, you always have that kind of like quick charge system right sitting yeah. there at the docks, right? Well, that would make sense. You wouldn't have to install any charging units or anything. You'd just kind of utilize the technology that's already there. Hopefully. We should call Volvo and let them know that we had this idea. Well, and we did talk to Volvo a while back, so we would love to, uh, maybe we can pitch some ideas to them oh. and have them back on and, and discuss these things. <laughs> I'm no engineer like or, or, you know. <laughs> we just come up with the ideas. They got to they gotta figure out how to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we have a few drawings and we kind of show them the drawings. And yes, right? All right. So last up in the headline section, we did want to touch on yes. the Virtual Barrel Boss. So this yep. is a, a wake surf competition in Central Texas mm -hmm. uh, out of our uh, Marine Max uh, Sail and Ski stores out there. Winners were just announced, so yep. we wanted to take you through some of this. It is quite a long video, uh, so we'll probably just kind of skip through it here. But if you want to give that a, a, a full watch, you get yep. to see some cool people, um, you know, winners running and, and uh, just like little snippets of their runs. Yeah, and we did, um, so There's that's Bonnie. Bonnie. Yep, Bonnie is really cool. We actually interviewed her last year at the Barrel Boss. I had an opportunity uh, pre-COVID to get out there and and uh, see what Barrel Boss was all, all about there at Lake Austin, I believe. Yep. Um, and it's just a, a great opportunity for people in the local area to to uh, you know hop on a, a Nautique boat and, uh, and, and show them what they got, you know, in terms of wakeboarding, wake surfing. Um, yeah. just some really cool stuff. So this year they kind of did something a little bit different. They uh, they took the virtual approach and they had people um, submit their videos yep, to Marine Max. And uh, then the, the people uh, like Bonnie and the team then judged the videos and said, you know, who the winners were. So great opportunity to get people kind of uh, proactive about, you know, filming some really cool video content uh, out, out there on the water. And uh, look at all the kids. I mean, they're just having a blast. I know. So the, this it was uh, their 12th annual event, uh, mm -hmm. and like Kelly mentioned, it did take place virtually through the first weeks of, of November. And to qualify, entrants were to submit an unedited video of their best wake surf run that does not exceed one minute. And the team received over 50 submissions. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Nautique sponsored the event. Clearly, you see their nice logo there. Mm -hmm. They actually supplied team riders to judge the contest, and I believe Jody Grassman was one of those. Yep. So good stuff there. They had a bunch of sponsors um, and winners. Um, this video goes through first, second, and third place in every single division from Groms, which is 10 and under, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up through interpretive, juniors, masters, men's at the outlaw division, which is pro riders. And then they also had a women's division and a skim division for boards less than uh, a certain length with only one fin. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different divisions, a ton of entries, and really a successful event considering they didn't get anyone together. Yeah, it's it's just great because, I mean, again, you know, we always talk about boating being the one thing that really hasn't changed. You can still get out yeah. on the water. You can still, you know, get behind the boat if you want to do some wake surfing, wakeboarding, um, and, and that doesn't change. So, I mean, the, the families are still out there having a ton of fun. Uh, socially distanced, of course, and uh, just a, a great way to uh, continue the the lifestyle, the boating lifestyle, even in these trying times of 2020, yes. this crazy year. <laughs> this crazy so. year, indeed. So, <laughs> well, shout out uh, to the obviously, winners. yep, shout out to all the winners and uh, that look at that beautiful water. Yeah, such a cool spot. I mean, uh, Texas is is certainly you know we we live here in in Florida, and it's just kind of a different more tropical but texas being out on the water there is really cool just you know your scenery is different the water's different but it's just a ton of fun to get out there too uh in in a different locale and bonnie if you've never met her she just you know she loves boating she's just all about it this is her this is her brainchild too i mean it's her whole <laughs> thing is a, a huge part of it is this uh barrel boss so uh i think we need to get bonnie back on one of these days don't, i don't agree you think, Lisa? i'll work on that 
I'll work on that. That's great. <laughs> Please welcome to the program, Mr. Troy Warner, soul surfer, water lover, and owner operator of Pelican Ops, an eco friendly marine service company. Welcome to the program, Troy. Welcome. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Kelly. Thank you guys for having me. Did hey. I do well? Did I introduce you appropriately? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a passion pumping misfit surfer. So that's just about <laughs> it. That's the title that we'll go with. I was going to say, when you got a title like Soul Surfer, Water Lover, and Owner Operator of Pelican Ops, that is a pretty cool title. I wish I could have that on my business card. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. It's it's pretty epic. Yeah. So before we get into all the cool uh, uh, offers that your company provides for marine Mm -hmm. services, give us a little bit about your background. How did you connect with the water so hardcore? Um, it started at a young age, man. I was like four years old the first time I went fishing on a boat with my grandfather. <laughs> and he uh, he never took me again because I wouldn't sit still. But it, it started there. <laughs> um, it Then, you know, SeaWorld as a kid, learned about stuff like that. Growing up in um, wow. South Florida on the edge of the Everglades, which has now been backfilled and sadly is part of our uh, – our South Florida watershed issues. But, um, you know, that with surfing around eight years old, I just kept with it. Um, I joined the United States Marine Corps at 20. I was a diesel mechanic and a combat swim instructor there. Um, Got out of that. And then I got into uh, commercial diving, did some underwater welding, cruise around up and down the uh, Northeast coast on tugboats. um, And then uh, done water tank inspections, river, um, you know, um, pipeline inspections and stuff like that. And it just being on the coastline, you start to see things where to me, they were just, you know, it was a common practice. And then the more you watch it, you fast forward till now. This year I was in mm-hmm. the medical world traveling nationally and it got shut down. And uh, I thought about opening my own uh, contracting company for years and uh, didn't happen. And then the plan was to start off in June this year. And then we mm-hmm. pushed back till July. And, um, you know, it was just one of those when the world got shut down, I had just moved back to Florida, um, was able to cruise to the coast because I didn't have anybody around. And all of the trash kind of like started to subside. And then, you know, when the society flipped the switch back on, it, it was it was staggeringly frightening how much more trash came. But when it came wow. back, it came back with, you know, masks and, and the gloves uh-huh. and all that stuff. And I just knew no matter what, we'd been in communication with uh, WPS since uh, last year. Um, we had signed a contract and pushed it back with the Seaven project um, from February. And then we stepped off in July. And uh we're just getting some traction now. Um, Marine Max and uh, Chris and St. Pete have been amazing. We did a we did a trial demo with you guys, and uh, it was it was our first time to put a unit in the water, and it, it's been nothing but amazing since. That's oh, great. that's awesome! So, tell me about the name Pelican Ops. How did we come up with this? So, Pelican Ops is I, I love the military. I was in the Marine Corps. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I got out. Um, just to pursue other adventures in life. But if you look up the meaning, everything with me has some sort of like symbolic meaning or whatever, but like a pelican will bleed out its own blood to take care of its young. And it kind of like, it's a protector. And with the idea behind Pelican Ops is our intent is to take on um, coastline issues. More so the platform mm-hmm. we've created right now is is we have the CVIN project, skimming units or whatever. And there's other companies we're talking to now um, that have other units that, that complement that one, but mm-hmm. also with the ocean habitat, mini reef systems and fish lights that we're teamed up with, we create a platform where we can move, remove, um, plastic pollutions down to two millimeters in size, surface water, wow. like petroleum based films. But we also create artificial habitats that, um, promote and grow fish while filtering out water. Um, and then that's kind of the platform we want, but we also do offer commercial dive services, um, I absolutely love salvage work. It was one of the biggest things I did um, in the New England area, um, in the tugboat world and stuff like that. So like Mm -hmm. looking at coming back to Florida and there's a lot of derelicts out in the waterways and stuff like that. (laughs) We're looking at trying to get some uh, um, grant money to start doing some of that as well. But it's it's more of a broad spectrum where we want to promote and educate as much as we want to clean up and take on the task that a lot of people don't realize is so predominant out there. So yeah. real quick before, uh, so f- 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 to get people's mind around exactly what you're talking about with the, with the pollution and, and all these things ha- taking place, um, there are some videos that you've provided us kind of showing your filtration system. So um, how about I play the one with the, maybe the bags, the, okay. I say that as the Midwestern with the bags, is the fucking bag, <laughs> but, um, I've been called out on that one a few times, but um, so I'm going to play this. And if you want to kind of just give a, a, you know, a voiceover as this plays as to what people are seeing here and uh, you know, and, and how this can affect and, and really help out the, uh, the environment around us. All right. This is the coolest video we have. Cause this is the very first one, like the first five minutes of flipping the switch out at St. Pete uh, Marine Max. 
And uh, when I was doing the install of the unit, that's a, uh, it's a, it's a sandwich like deli bag mm -hmm. that had floated past into the corner. Um, you guys have a unique basin style um, um, marina there. And yeah. it, I lost it because my hands were full. And then after we turned it back on, it came back. And then we started doing this film. Um, and you can see as it, it just, it constantly pulls. One other thing I want to take note is you see all the foam that's in there. Yep. That foam yeah. is like a huge issue. And a lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of these big, um, you guys have like aluminum um, style docks and, and closed mm -hmm. cell systems there, but the open cell foam concrete style uh, docking systems that they have in the world today are filled with that. And if you look at across oh. the beaches and stuff like that, like it's the little bits that, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's not even five minutes of that sea bin running in the water yep. and it's collected all that styrofoam and here goes the bag. And uh, oh I think it's gosh. really cool because it shows you no matter what, probably about in every hundred feet or so. Um, mm -hmm. I started noticing this a couple years ago. Um, and with the sea bin, like it's the same idea where there's humans, there's trash, you know, yep. that bag, yeah. someone didn't throw that bag in the water. It was probably sitting on the table, possibly on a boat or a picnic table near the shore and the wind blew and you couldn't grab mm -hmm. it. Yep. Um, so the idea with the skimming systems like this um, is they can, they can address the issue where, you know, our mishaps may not catch something that goes into a water and not everybody can, you know, wearing a wetsuit and can say, oh man, there goes trash, let me jump in the water. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, but it's it's one of those things where they are needed. Um, and you can see just, I mean, that's not even five minutes. Here goes the bag now. Sure. And it's yeah. all that styrofoam that's already been collected. Um, there actually was a, a little uh, baby loggerhead that swam past there. I didn't get the, the camera that oh, morning, man. which was amazing. Troy. I know, I know, I know. I do have a photo of him. I'll send it to you later, Lisa. Oh. I did get a picture of him, but he wasn't close enough to the sea bin to have it. But it was so cool to see where he just kind of swam up there and swam away. But he mm -hmm. got to swim away where all that trash that he probably would have eaten is in that basket. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you, you kind of mentioned that too, especially with the foam, but also the plastic bags. Like turtles, they they definitely like to eat, uh, you know, um, jellyfish a lot of the times too. So they yeah. see a plastic bag and they'll think that that's a jellyfish, and that can be bit major trouble, right? Exactly. And that's a lot of big things with the, the gloves right now. If you think about like all these rubber gloves that people are wearing, yeah, rubber gloves. you might as well not wear them because Masks. when they end up in the ocean, the fingers will hold air and they, they, they dangle down below and that, you know, mimics that of a jellyfish. So it's like, we're, we are killing our environment, not even knowing it. And it's more like yeah. the education to get out there that we do it. Mm -hmm. Um, how does this uh, so so uh, all the trash and things go into it? Uh, then does it need to just be basically dumped out maybe once a day or something like that, or how does that work? Um, yeah, so basically, it, depending on like the flow, um, you, you want to use the the currents, um, and depending on the situation, the marina, you want to put them in flows. You want the wind assist them and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So um, they they need to be empty depending on how the, the debris is. So right. first has been day, there's been days where there's been like a lot more bio debris that comes down into St. Pete and Chris has filled up, you know, 55 gallon tr um, trash cans in an eight hour shift almost Jeez. with, with oh. debris. So depending on where you're at now, mind you, um, we are, you guys have a second unit coming to St. Pete, so they're going to be offset. So this little C bin unit is going to have a, a counterpart to, uh, hey. you know, tag team. But um, depending on where you're at, um, that's where you would need some more units to address the issue to where you wouldn't have to actually like empty it so often and frequently. Right. The Seabin unit, unit has like, it's like a 2.2 cubic foot basket basically that holds 44 pounds of debris. Um, but if you start throwing like four or five, six bottles in there, it's going to yeah. get filled up quicker than it would otherwise. Yep. Right. So. And I know uh, Chris Pointer is the dock master down at Marine Max St. Pete. It's, this is who we keep re referencing here. Yes. Uh, he's posted some really cool video on their uh, Instagram channel mm -hmm. about the sea bin and just how, you know, jaw dropping it is to see how much it actually collects. He's like, I did nothing. I picked up nothing. Look at what this <laughs> this product has done. And you're like you're saying, he's got that 50, 55 gallon drum of just stuff. You know, whether yeah. it's leaves or bottles or the tiny pieces of, of styrofoam, mm -hmm. it's it's working all of the time. It's a, it's amazing. It's amazing product. I'm glad they're getting another one. <laughs> exactly. This this video, you guys, is that playing yet? Oh. It's really cool. This this video is amazing to me because this no matter where you are in marinas, mm -hmm. as much as you try to worry about the environment and not have like any kind of petroleum based products on top of a boat in the morning by afternoon the sun's you know the temperatures raised like you know maybe 10 degrees down here in florida um mm -hmm. and then that fuel expands and it burps over and it creates these fuel sheens on the water and you yep. can chris said this sheen was gone in about um an hour and a, just under an hour and a half 
from the time he noticed it. Um, there's a there's a, a pig mat in the bottom of the basket, so it, it addresses and it, it collects. So basically, it's a hydrophilic pad that will take the petroleum-based products out of the water and leave the water. So that's an added wow. pad that goes inside that bin. So it's not that we're just taking and the sea bin is, is, is skimming off that petroleum product. It's actually getting captured in a hydrophilic pad and just the clean water is getting pumped out. That's how it removes it so um, efficiently with this, along with all the trash and stuff that's in the, uh, the bin right there. Cool story yeah. is uh, Chris sent me a photo uh, a couple of days ago. It was after Thanksgiving. He had a like a basketball sized pumpkin floating around the uh, marina that he couldn't <laughs> grab. And uh, after like a day and a half or two days, he said the uh, the Steven had pulled it next to it and it had its own little pumpkin out there for Halloween. But uh, <laughs> they're, they're pretty impressive with what they can pull. Um, it just runs off a two and a half um, amp pump and uh, you know, it just runs constantly, but it creates that flow. Um, and it mm -hmm. can pull from quite a significant distance away if you really look at it. Wow. That's excellent. All right. So clearly the Seabin is an amazing product to have um, in any marina. I know that you Absolutely. have a couple of other really cool uh, products or offerings that we do want to talk about. So let's let's hit the, the mini reefs first. Absolutely. What are they these, and why are they so important? These are epic, man. I, I love this. <laughs> Dave Wolf and Ocean Habitats are absolutely amazing. Um, these mini reef systems, they're, they're basically, if you take most waterfront property here in Florida, you, you basically have about 120 foot waterfront. That's just flat. Um, take into consideration that most waterways here in the US, um, you know, for the most part, have been dredged of, um, over the years mm -hmm. just keep like shipping and boating lanes open or whatever. So what happens is we strip away all the bottom topography and then there's nothing left for any of the, the fish or filter feeders of the water to attach to and grow on. And with the mini reef systems, um, they average about 125 feet of, of space for growth with all the different layers and the ropes that are in there. But they create a, a refuge for fish to seek so like juvenile yeah. fish can grow in but then they they they're about 24 inches deep and they're always with suspended um off a top float um in the first 24 inches of the water and that basically catches all the filter feeders and that's about where 90 percent of their food source is so mm -hmm. you know they're tucked underneath docks that wouldn't have anything they're out of sight out of mind but what they do is you know they, they help create an underwater environment in your backyard that is not yeah. only bringing and growing fish in life that you can, you know, in turn one day fish with your kids or grandkids, um, yeah. but it's also filtering the water. So a lot of times there's been places down in Marco Island where there one guy has eight underneath his dock and he's, he's helped support his neighbors, get him around their little end of their, you know, dead end canal um, uh -huh. in the coastal waterway. And it mm -hmm. really cleans the water. And that one I've seen, you know, seahorses just right there at a dock, manatees, everything, crabs living in it. They're, they just, they grow so much fish. And it's just, it, it, it's not even that they're doing anything more than creating an environment and yeah. just a safe refuge where fish can go and actually grow and mature to a size where they can defend themselves. And that's what it does. And then a secondary benefit to it is it's filtering the water, you know, yeah. you know all the stuff that guys like me go and scrape off the bottom of your boats that is going to clean the water, but slows you down and costs more fuel. These guys kind of take it over and, and they help filter the water. No, that's excellent. Process. So this isn't just for for commercial like restaurants. Like individuals can have these in in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's three different sizes of the mini reefs, and there's a freshwater version called the fresh crib. Um, they all start right around uh, the I think the like 200 range. Forgive me, I don't have the exact price off the top of my head. Um, that's not but bad. we we can fit them to any um, system that you want. The the photos that are right there on the uh, the website that's the uh, that's the mini reef plus. That's a bigger system. Mm -hmm. It's that's four feet by three feet by two feet. Okay. Um, and then there's the the mini reef. The original is three feet by two feet by two feet, and they just came out with a a micro reef, which is two by two by two. So basically, mm -hmm. yeah, um, you can kind it's of, the size of any little configuration exactly the the width of it. So like if you think about yeah. even some of like the small finger piers for like a uh, um, sailboats and stuff like that, you can use the micro reef to go oh. underneath it. There's a um, there's some there's some private customers down by your. Uh, your uh, Fort Myers Marina, and there wow. has a hundred of them underneath wow. his dock. Whoa! Wow. That's that's the uh, that's the water safety supervisor, Bodie Dog. <laughs> Bodie, Bodie Dog. Dog. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he, he likes to get vocal every now and again. He but, wants uh, to go surfing with his dad. Absolutely, he's already swam <laughs> once today. So, chill, buddy. The uh, no, that's cool. But, um, but they're really cool because they tuck away underneath, and what they do is, you know, depending on where you are, a lot of these canal systems are really they're stripped from all their, you know, natural, you know 
our oh, habitats oh. for the environments or whatnot for the creatures to live in. And yeah. then these these can tuck underneath and, and they're so inexpensive for what they provide because you think uh, a mini reef system that the three by two by two that that'll average once established um, about 30,000 gallons of water it will filter a day. Um, you know, with microorganisms and pl um, planktons and stuff like that. So, like, imagine a swimming pool getting filtered every day in your backyard, and all yeah. you had to do was just put this thing in that requires no electric, no maintenance, anything. Just mm -hmm. once it's installed, it, it starts to grow. Um, depending on the salinity levels and how far into like canal systems and the fresh water you are, mm -hmm. uh, will will slow the the maturing of like the filter feeders and stuff. But you know. At about nine to 12 months, you're, you're pretty much established unless you're in some of the really, um, you know, like more freshwater areas that don't have as much of a flow. But in the areas sure. that were, you know, all of our canal systems down in South Florida, you know, all the way up into, I'm in Melbourne myself here, but, you know, across to you guys on the West Coast, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they fit in everywhere. And it's just one of those things where it's just like, if, if you have a waterfront and a, and a couple hundred extra dollars, hit us yeah. up. We can put mm -hmm. a couple hundred more fish in your backyard and do that every year, you know, because these yeah. things last. For, yeah, you, you you think of all the the fishermen out there that that live on the yeah. uh, you know have a dock in their backyard and if, <laughs> just an opportunity. Look at that little <laughs> booty dog right there. That's the booty dog. <laughs> you just want to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry about that. No worries. And uh, also, I, I noticed here uh, underwater dock lighting. So you kind of combine forces there. You got the mini reefs plus the underwater dock lighting, which always attracts a ton of fish too. Uh, and is are uh, really exciting uh, for for fishermen, especially. Uh, could you kind of talk a little bit about that underwater dock lighting as well? Absolutely, a dock underwater dock lighting through fishlights.com is is amazing. Um, you can see in the photo we have there. Basically, what they do is is they enhance natural food sources in the water, and they reflect against the microorganisms in the photoplankton, which bring in your bait fish. Um, mm -hmm. So once you start bringing in the bait fish, you start bringing in more fish. And unlike like you know top side lighting at night some people ask you know oh is it does it have any negative impact on the environment it doesn't underwater lighting is a little bit different from um like our ambient lighting to street lights mm -hmm. and stuff right. like that that would distract like sea turtles and stuff but like this doesn't it's, it's underwater they're all run off of photo cells so they they turn on the same time every night with the um you know as dusk comes on they turn on and they just create a like a, a natural environment that enhances food sources where sometimes it probably could be more of an issue um in some areas um, but it turns your backyard into an aquarium at night. And now imagine oh, yeah. if, if you were in an area where you had some trash that you didn't want these smaller fish to eat, you can throw a seabin in there. There and you then go. There's no bottom topography, so you throw in a mini reef and then you get you a get light and before you know it. Yeah, you don't need an 80 inch flat screen on your wall anymore. You need, you know, you need your full spectrum backyard and you're just like, look what's there. Man, oh, yeah. so that gives me a really sweet idea though. So if you did have a TV with a live webcam of the mini reef, with the underwater dock lighting and you have, you know, the filtration system, I, I could watch that all day. Exactly. <laughs> we did an install of a light and a, and a reef system in, uh, I was with uh, Dave and his boys in uh, um, down Marco Island area. And there was an Airbnb where they had a, uh, um, a viewing underwater from the den. Yes. And we put a light and a reef there. And I'm just like, that. that's like, that's my goal in life now. It's like, I want to live on the water so I can put what? a mini reef, grow fish, put yep. a light, and then I don't need cable. Comcast no. won't like me, man, but I'll tell you what, this <laughs> fish will be amazing. All you need to do is stream the Discovery Channel, and I think you can just buy that one. Yep. Exactly. That's awesome. Okay, so a great catalog of products. So what other services do you offer? I mean, obviously, you're you're installing, installing the stuff. You go out and maybe do con some consultations with people to, like, figure Absolutely. out what they want and need. Absolutely. We'll, we'll meet with anybody. Um, we actually are looking to do um, – we where we just um, finished our demo with you guys in St. Pete, mm -hmm. we are looking for a new location. Anybody that's interested um, that would like to do a demo with a, with um, a sea bin in their marina um, or harbor, anywhere you want, we're looking to do a, an install for like a two week time, do a trial run with some places. Cause nevertheless, one thing we learned with Chris is the demo is going to help the environment no matter what, whether yeah. you buy it or not, the demo in the water is going to increase awareness to people that, um, that visit your area as much as um, it's going to be pulling plastics and um, pollutants out of the water. So the demos are advantageous everywhere. Just 
for us to get our name out there, but also to show that like we believe in what we're doing and we stand um, we stand behind it 100 percent and it's needed now. Like we got to save what's left and we can't wait till tomorrow, because if if you keep waiting on tomorrow to start, tomorrow's don't start coming. They start to slow I, down. Yeah. And, and that's a big thing. So we, we, we do that. And then we do offer full um, spectrum of uh, dive services, um, custom tailored. We're, we're a smaller outfit right now. Um, but, you know. We have a lot of interest in, uh, you know, recovery work and kind of getting more of the debris out of the water. But we can mm -hmm. handle anything. We, uh, we can, we can do construction jobs and, you know, to any level you want. We're, we're aligned with some amazing companies. I uh, have some friends in the industry. I got, we got some strong ties with some bigger commercial companies, some tugboat companies. So, um, it's, it's a matter of just being able to provide a service that most people don't think is available mm -hmm. um, at a scale. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not like the big companies that are going to cost you, you know, thousands of dollars a day. We, we can curtail our, our expenses um, and meet your needs um, and your coastline desires um, in your budget. So it kind of kind of makes it fun to stay a little bit small um, and, and yeah. more direct with with people. So that's what we try to do. Um, mm -hmm. And we're looking to grow a little bit more. The uh, as, as the one thing that continues to come is, is the pollutants in the environment. And if we don't counter the, a way to take them out of it. Um, it kind of it's going to be more of a, a sadder coastal area. And the yeah. biggest thing is we have to catch the pollutants before they go out into the oceans. Like if you think about four oceans, they do an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. they, and they, they, they've really brought the awareness to like a global mm -hmm. scene in a sense. And it's just it's our part as citizens and, you know, just lovers of the planet to, to go out there and, and help clean up and, and do it. You know, if everybody shared that idea it would be a great thing, you know? So if you're out there on the water making money, man, put a little bit back, I promise it's worth it. Like that's the biggest thing right now is, is everybody loves the environment, but not everybody wants to pay for it. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we're here, we're willing to donate our time and our resources to prove to you like how invaluable it is to have it in your facilities or on your coastline. And I right. think that's the biggest part about, um, you know, one of the biggest goals with Pelican Ops is, is educating because though this is the life I've chose to live and the environment that I chose to live in, a lot of times it's newer to people coming to it and they don't understand like the all that goes with it and all that is, right. is hindering, you know, what they could see. Yep. Well, you're a good man, Troy. You have yeah, a, an amazing it. operation here and uh, we're, we're happy to that you could join us today and we can help spread your message because you're right. Um, it's it's. It, the pollutants never stop, so we need to do everything we can as a, you know, society to help clean up after ourselves, clean up after our friends and mm -hmm. make sure that the uh, the location that we love to boat and, and swim and hang out in stays clean so we can continue to boat and swim and hang out in the exactly. those locations. Yeah, yeah, very well Steph, said. Uh, Kelly, any more questions for you? I know you are, you're a giant fish lover. Hey, I mean, it's it's good stuff. I, I It just makes me think even bigger of, uh, you know, we, there's a big ocean out there. These are, you know, th yeah. they're knocking out these small spots. But, you know, you, you think of all the just the, the, the large oceans with, with things floating out there and Hopefully at a certain point in time, you always see some sort of news story about, you know, some kid that invented some new machine that goes out and starts filtering all the water in the middle of the ocean. So I'm, we're yeah, hoping Troy's that. Yeah, Troy's that kid. Troy's that kid. <laughs> he certainly that. is. I'm that guy taking that product to the end user. I'm, I'm that guy helping yeah. that kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the biggest yes. part about it is, is, is it's an education and stopping it to get to the ocean. If we can yes. stop it before it gets to the ocean, it's not as, not as much of a needle in a haystack kind of cleanup idea. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. So uh, if you want to learn more, uh, pelicanops.com is their website and you're also on mm -hmm. social media. They can learn more and see some of the cool videos uh, like what you showed. Absolutely. Please check us out. Uh, Pelican underscore ops on Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook. I am on LinkedIn and do a lot of stuff there, but please check yep. us out. Give us a follow. Um, we're starting to get some traction and uh, yep. we're starting to get some really cool. We're, we're linking up with some other companies too. So we'll, we'll definitely be expanding on our portfolio now. And, uh, you know, we got some really stuff, cool stuff coming up and I'm excited because it just, it's only going to be a positive impact on the environment. So I love awesome. it. Well, well I, I'm looking forward to having you on again. Thank so you. So the next, next cool project you have, you, you're doing an, an, uh, a cool install, take some photos, think of us. We'd Absolutely. love to have you on again to talk more about this because uh, you're right. Education is what mm -hmm. we can do to help you know, let people know that there is a way, whether you're, you know, an individual with a dock behind your house, or uh, a bigger company with multiple marinas there's a and way to help big, help the, the system key thing right there is too it, you don't have to live on the water to help if, mm -hmm. if you if you yeah. find yourself in a financial position where you can you can donate um resources um and a lot of times it's it's people have the 
the coastline, but they don't have the money to do it. And a lot mm-hmm. of times people, people will donate um, resources, you know, so we can do that and we can team up with, uh, we're linked up with some amazing 50C3 companies that are nonprofit that can handle those kind of donations in a sense where, you know, we can collaborate together. Excellent. Right. Sounds like uh, the dog has a squeaky toy. Oh, he does. <laughs> he just, he just made me, a, he just made me a mess to clean up. That's what all the extra Oh was. no. Hey. <laughs> if it's not the right. environment, it's after Bodie Dog. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right, well, Troy, thanks, did Troy. we cover everything? Did we miss anything? No, I think that's it. Okay, I, I'm sure we could continue to talk and just Absolutely. You know, hear stories. Yeah. You're such an interesting fellow. So uh, maybe next time we'll have to talk more about your surfing adventures too. Oh, yeah, because Jess sure. just poked me. I, so if you guys got a second, I totally yeah. stored Mavericks last year. And uh, I, I made it, I tried to buy a house. And because I started my own company, I'm 1099. So mm-hmm. I didn't have two years of 1099. So I don't qualify for a VA loan. Like nothing I can do uh. to get me a loan last year. So I kind of went full rogue. And it's how this came together is because <laughs> instead of getting the house and the deposit that I put down on the money, I ended up booking a, uh, a trip to Nazare to do a surf it course with Andrew Cotton, where I got hooked up with Garrett McNamara, that pushed me into this. And then last wow. year, New Year's, I had a, bro- so I lost two brothers. One died of heart failure. One was murdered and they like oh knocked him out and then pushed him in, in a lake and he drowned. <laughs> and, uh, this, well, 20, leaving 2019, I'd surf Nazare, Portugal. I met Garrett McNamara and he lent me gear because I paddled out from the beach there and no one had done it. And I took a two wave hold down for like 25 seconds. Andrew Cotton's dude was like, dude, this dude's freaking dead. And, uh, <laughs> I make it all the way to Mavericks, like been watching it since I was 11 years old. And I almost freaking drowned out of Mavericks um, New Year's Eve this year, lost a board, had to paddle back in. But the, the crazy part about that story is I got yanked under on a 40 foot wave. Now, mind you, it was the biggest wave I've ever seen in the water. Like, and I was like, I paddle up this thing and I think I'm going to get pulled through. I like exhale. And I'm like, and as I'm saying that I get yanked under so violently, my left ankle from my leash still hurts to this day. I'm getting pulled under and it's like black and I'm like, well, I really screwed this one up. And I'm like, I have no hair. And like when you're underwater, the biggest thing you have to do is just like, you have to find your, your, your composure and you have to like, yeah. you have to get like relaxed quick as possible. Cause that's how you, you know, extend your, your breath or whatever. And I literally, like I relaxed for a second. I was like, chance, I hope you didn't wake up underwater like this. And my leash snapped and I popped up and I was like, and then I just went back in, which that was another whole deal. But fishermen found my board three miles offshore. I got it back. I paddled out the next day. But I'm going to be hitting Mavericks again this year. And Jess just booked uh, my 43rd birthday. I'll be at Wine Bay in Hawaii wow. for the first time. So, so you, you mentioned Portugal, man. and I, I've, I've seen some crazy yeah. waves in Portugal. Here, I just have to bring this up because it's exactly where you're talking about here. Yep. Um, here, let me just see if I can play this oh my gosh so, so like, i haven't seen that big of portugal but i've seen like 30 35 foot portugal and it's epic and you're and referring to garrett this, mcnamara right yes i love this dude he is like my idol my whole entire life the only reason i met him last year is because he freaking broke his foot in uh in indo uh a week before oh my and like gosh. literally like was like there that? Uh, yeah, I haven't surfed anything that big, but I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> to get to it. I, I spent $25,000 of my own money last year chasing this, and I'm broke this year. So it's just <laughs> like I'm going to wing in a prayer and just drive out to Cali. But, yeah, it's <laughs> it's epic, man. That's well, awesome. in there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just some insane stuff out there in Portugal. I mean, uh, I've never seen anything like yeah. it. You can get some of the craziest videos and stuff are, are out of uh, there. So, And it's exactly – that's where I took a two-wave hold down with, like, 30-footers. And it was, like, that water there, the energy. Like, I I – associate it just with no pun intended but like it's like my heroin like i you i can't find anything else like on the planet like when you're riding a face that big it's like the only time it's completely peace and there's no other distractions in the world but when you're in and around it the energy is just like oh, it's it's crazy Next i don't level, know huh? yeah <laughs> it's epic but i'm grateful That's for awesome. you guys thank you so much hey thank yes, you troy thank you troy Doing good things um, out there. We we really trying. appreciate it. We're trying. So. so thank you. This helps us more than you can even imagine. I, I swear the biggest thing I underestimated was the networking and and like thinking mm-hmm. everybody loves the environment. They want to help. And it's it's not that way. So it's really cool. So thank yeah. you. You gotta tell your story. You're gonna be doing it for a long time. I, I wish I you all so. the best. We're we're doing our part to help educate the people and push out your message and all the great products you offer. So hopefully you'll see some more people giving you a call after this. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right. Thank you, Kelly. Right. Thank yeah. you, Troy. We'll see you later. Bye. Yeah. Have a good one. We'll see you. Bye. Okay. Wow.
His energy is infectious. Well, and, and the stories, I'm sure that, that we just, you know, that's the tip of the iceberg with the stories that he has uh, from, from all the things that he's seen. So uh, yeah, Man. very interesting and really cool. Uh, you know, um, just some really innovative things that are taking place. And uh, even some of them at our Marine Max stores, which is really cool. And that's right. uh, pelicanops.com, facebook.com uh, slash pelicanops and Instagram pelican underscore ops. Yeah, the guy, out. the guy definitely knows what he's talking about. I mean, from from working at SeaWorld, he's part of the U.S. Yep. Marine Corps. Yeah. He has been diving up in the Northeast. I would love um, to see that resume. That would be a really cool resume to just read through if you were an employer or something being like, hmm, yeah. okay, you've seen it all pretty much, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you well, know let's what? get Landon in here, huh? Yes, I was going to say, I, I have not seen everything that's on the social medias, and I need more. Landon. <laughs> oh, it's never ending. There's always more. Um, but, always more. But what a neat, what a neat guest. Troy is a, offers an amazing product for folks that are out on the water. I mean, anytime mm -hmm. you've ever boated and been out on the water and you've seen something floating there and you're just annoyed by it and you're just yeah. frustrated with humans and you're like, yeah. why do we have to do this? You know, everybody's felt that. Yeah. And yeah. for this product that Troy is offering uh, for a couple hundred bucks to throw on a dock, I think is really cool. So like For you sure. said, Troy's energy is infectious, so we're gonna we're gonna keep the episode going. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, and I'm I I, I can't wait to uh, hopefully get him back, and it'd be really cool to like get him live wherever he is, you know, out there on the docks and kind of showing it firsthand or something. Yeah, or even maybe in Portugal. Oh, right, while he's away. surfing, yeah, we'll just get a live <laughs> shot. Maybe have a chat with him while he's surfing eighty foot waves or whatever, you know. <laughs> Jeez, um, yeah. But right. so, yeah, to, to your point with social media, there's some interesting stuff I want to show you because I sure. think there's an interesting dynamic that I'm about to show you. So uh, we have we have the intelligence of animals and then mm -hmm. the silliness or um, kind of what we were just talking about, the frustratingly I won't say stupid. Yeah, yeah, you know what it is. So let's <laughs> let's take a look at these. It's kind which of which one funny. we which one do you want to start with? We got Dash 360 and Motorboat here, Landon. Surprises, Kelly. All right, we'll go Dash Three Hundred and Sixty because it just sounds like a cool uh, website or something, or or like a new like news news show. Oh my gosh! Okay. So this video <laughs> has this video. I don't know when it originally came out, but it's probably um, been out for a little while. But it's it's mm -hmm. really making its rounds because of how interesting yeah. this is. So we have an orangutan, right? I'm guessing that's what that is. Um, is he in a canoe. In a canoe. Here. Yep. Lisa, have, what do you think is going to happen? You think he's going to wave at the camera, maybe, or take <laughs> yeah, out like I sure a, hope so. Like he's definitely going to paddle. And this is the intelligence of animals, right? This he is the intelligence of animals. Orangutans have leveled up. They are now rowing <laughs> in their canoes. Not and... only rowing, but he actually built that canoe, from what I heard. Um, no, well, I'm just kidding. He didn't build the canoe. <laughs> well, don't know Kelly's about all that. Rumor. But but no, I mean, um, it's a very short video. I don't know if you can sure. put it on a loop or just play it again. But it's it's a, it's a video of an orangutan in a canoe. And he's actually he's got a paddle in both hands and yep. is... Able to kind of figure out how to row. I mean, it's it's interesting. Maybe it's it's funny because we see things that animals do, and as humans, we like to attribute human traits to it, mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, when my dog looks at me a certain way, it's it's yeah. you know a human trait. It's yep. trying to be cute or something. When it's not, it's just the way it is. The dog. Yeah. So I look at this video and I think it's interesting. Wondering if does the orangutan doing that motion with a paddle actually know that it's propelling itself forward with the canoe, or is there just like something in the water that it's just like trying to you know just doing its thing? Seen, just, yeah, he's seen humans do it, and he's like, oh, let me yeah. try. But, Maybe but a we, combination of both. We do know that orangutans and monkeys, they've got, uh, you know, the they use tools in certain mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's an ant hill, they take a stick and they stick it down there to get the ants and then they collect it and eat it off of that. And, you know, they'll they'll do certain things to climb where they're, they're utilizing tools. And yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, this I think the context behind this video that I thought was hilarious was. Um, the, the post was, you know, orangutans are learning how to, uh, boat and canoe. It's 2020. <laughs> now we have to worry about orangutans taking over the world. Yes. It's, it's yeah. 2020. So. Oh, 2020. Yeah. I love that orangutans are boating. Orangutans are boating. Boating's for everybody. Yeah. Soon he'll, he'll be wanting, uh, some dual Verados out back. And, uh, you know. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Power. <laughs> 
Well, we, that's funny. Good stuff he, there, Landon. He knows All where right. to go when, when he needs that. So yeah, so so we have that video, which is which is really interesting, showing the intelligence of animals. Now we have mm -hmm. this, and Kelly, if you can play the sound on this by chance, okay. I think, I think it's uh, important we listen to this. Do that. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> Talking about outboards. <laughs> Is that yeah. a Halloween costume? What's happening here? Is that an adult or a child? That's the question. It's so. that's an adult. Uh, that video has been out for a little while, but I thought it was hilarious to pair it up with that first one that we just had. So for our audio oh. only listeners, it's a video of a guy on a boat. <laughs> But how many horsepower he, would that be considered? He, like it's two. <laughs> two. Very slow. <laughs> Very slow. So yeah. he's sitting on the back of the boat, and it looks like he has the shell of a Suzuki engine uh, over his entire top half of his body. Yeah. And his legs are dangling in the water, just kind of kicking away. So just, he uh, is the propeller. Social media gold is basically what that is for yeah. boaters, especially. Yeah. So what happened to the motor, though? Well, that's... Uh... Probably That's... creating an artificial reef at the bottom of the that, <laughs> that dock. Yeah, there you go. So glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hey, that good. Was fun. No, excellent stuff, Landon. And uh, well, let's. Uh, uh, very interesting, though. I have to say, especially with uh, these animals and uh, you know, learning the ways of. Hey, I can be propelling myself. It makes you wonder. You know. Hundreds of years, thousands of years from now, where those where those apes will be, and are those well, orangutans? And and full circle, going back to pelican ops, you know that's mm -hmm. why that kind of stuff is so important. That's why that work is so important for our marine life, uh, all of our animal mm -hmm. life. You know, it's important that we as humans who have essentially taken over the world with everything, yep. it's important that we sustain that environment for those those animals. So really yep. cool stuff with uh, those videos, but then pelican ops doing their part yep. too. Excellent. Oh, excellent stuff. All right, Landon, if people want to see more crazy stuff for Marine Max, where can they follow us? Just type in Marine Max. You'll find us. I promise. <laughs> True. Yeah. We are everywhere. Well, thank you, um, for Landon, for uh, helping that that cause of typing in Marine Max and then being being able to be found uh, no mm -hmm. matter where you go online. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anywhere that you are, we are as well. Mm -hmm. All right. right, Kelly, final thoughts from you, sir. Troy was awesome. Uh, I have to say, you know, Bodie Dog. Hey, shout out to Bodie Dog out there. He's just doing his thing too. Um, Got to make some uh, clean water for him so he can get out there and do his thing out on the water. And uh, so, shout out to Troy and Pelican Ops uh, for yeah. just being a great guest, doing some really cool stuff for sure. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Reminder, we have a sister podcast. It's called Boating Tips Live, and we premiere that every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and that's on Facebook and YouTube, and that is actually a live broadcast. So yes. You can join, type in comments, ask questions, all about boater education. We'd love you to join that as well and mm -hmm. uh, continue joining us every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, for more boating news, if you want to look at what we've done in the past, you can visit the Marine Max website on the Leisure Lifestyle blog, say that three times fast, <laughs> um, or through the Marine Max app. We have a ton of old episodes. You can also follow us on your favorite podcasting platform, Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio. We're continuing to expand that as well. We hope everyone enjoys today's boating broadcast. And as always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.